Hello, most EVs like our Ionic Electric here, they show you the power that you're using when you're driving the car in kilowatts, in a digital scale, um, in the case of the Ionic, on the kind of central infotainment system and some very spurious kind of vague indications on the instrument cluster as well. Now, if you're like me, it enables you to think, I think more so than petrol and diesel cars, how much power does it actually take to move around an electric car? So the Ionic Electric is, from what I could tell, about 1,420 kilograms. The battery makes up about 270 kilograms of that total weight. And I am, as of today, I measured it, about 80 kilograms. So that means um, it's the power to move around one and a half metric tons, 1,500 kilograms. And the Ionic's motor can produce a maximum of 88 kilowatts, um, either in forward or in reverse. I've tested the region on it a few times. I like to think of tangible, ordinary, everyday kind of household things to think about the question of, you know, how much power does it actually take to move this car around with me in it? So you might think about, say, the power uh, used to run a tumble dryer, a dryer to dry your clothes in your home. Or I think one of the easiest things for me is the power it needs to run an electric kettle, to boil water in an electric kettle. Now, this is not the kind of ideal sort of universal global way of thinking about it, because kettles work differently depending on whether you've got 110, 120 volt um, power supply or 220, 240 power supply in different parts of the world. So in this video, I'm going to assume that a kettle is about two kilowatt power. I'll have a go at trying to keep the ionic electric moving for the equivalent power of one kettle. Um, so I'll go somewhere sort of safe and quiet to do that. Um, bit rainy, sort of not ideal conditions today, really, but uh, you know, I'll give it my best shot. Um, I'll only do it when the roads are completely clear. And then I'll kind of um, leave the camera on the, uh, the sort of power indicator on this central console while I'm driving different kinds of route, urban routes, and I'll go on the motorway highway for a bit um, at higher speeds, and I'll try and indicate the number of kind of kettle equivalents that are being used at any one time. And we'll see what we get. Kettle challenge. Okay, so we're in eco mode, zero regen, so I don't get that. I'm watching for the road conditions, don't want to cause any problems. Uh, let's get it up to 30. Yeah, so, okay. Cattle to one kettle. Got a nice clear view behind me, there's no one there. One kettle. 30 miles an hour, more or less. One kettle, slightly downhill here though. Nothing coming. Oh, that's a bit more. Oh, nothing behind me. Very difficult to modulate that with my foot. because uh, it wouldn't be safe to. Still nothing behind me. Motorway highway speed kettle power test. Sped up footage.
urban kettle power test. Time-lapse footage. Country Roads Kettle Power Test. Time-lapse footage. So from those tests, I think it's clear that you could keep the Ionic Electric moving um, on a flat road at sort of 30 miles an hour or 50 kilometers an hour for about the same um, power that it takes to boil a kettle, about two kilowatts. It takes quite a lot of concentration to do that. I wouldn't recommend doing that very frequently on the roads. I only did it as long as the road conditions were safe. But, you know, it is possible to move the Ionic Electric with me in it at 1,500 kilograms, 1 1.5 metric tons. Um, with the equivalent power of boiling a kettle. So that's interesting to find out. So I hope you found this video um, interesting, a bit more lighthearted than my usual one with some driving footage. Uh, apologies for the kind of different camera angles and things like that. I was kind of experimenting where best to put things. So um, yeah, thanks for watching that. And uh, please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me. And bye for now.